TV besties, what is going on? We are back here with another overview, recap, ash commentary, whatever you want to call it. Welcome if you are new here. I'm your girl Ash. You can call me Ashley. You can call me Ash, which one you prefer. It really doesn't matter. I'm just glad you're here. Sit back, relax, enjoy, get you a drink, you know. We're not going to be here for long, though. I try not to keep y'all here, you know, for long. I try to, like, get to the doo-doo and then, like, you know, get y'all out of here and get y'all out of the door. So, yeah, go ahead and like and subscribe, definitely, especially if you enjoyed the video. We definitely want you to get you in on this family because, I mean, we are all besties, especially in this TV world. Like, who doesn't, love, who doesn't like to, you know, sit back, enjoy a good show with your besties? And that's me. So, while we don't enjoy it together, we get to talk about it together. So, definitely don't forget to comment down below your thoughts, your opinions, your views, you know, whatever. Anything I say doesn't make me right or wrong. Again, it's just my few points, my commentary for the specified episode of the day, the week, the whatever, whatever. And y'all, my heart is broke. My heart is broke. And maybe because um, I've been there in inappropriate situations uh, with someone where I wasn't in control of my body and um, did not, did, did she or did she not, did Caitlin not basically come out and say that she basically might have been sexually assaulted? by someone like let me even like be clear so you know she's had this very big you know she's had this health scare or whatever thankfully it was something that sounds like you know it's curable put her antibiotics or whatnot and it's cured when I you know it goes away on its own necessarily I won't say it's cured but I'll say it goes away um and with that, you know, when she's sitting in the interview, um, the producers ask her a question, you know, because she gets to talking about, uh, you know, it's been a long time and how she has anxiety around not being in control of her body. And the moment she says, when she goes to answer the question and she says, I'm like, she says, I don't know, basically, like, I don't know how to answer that or nobody knows and I'm like no Caitlin I'm literally y'all I'm literally like no Caitlin no Caitlin no Caitlin and she basically goes to say that there had been a circumstance where she wasn't in control of her body and somebody else was and that very well could be stemming from where that anxiety comes from It just broke my heart, y'all. It, 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 I mean, it, it, it happens to more people than not. And I think what it is, is sometimes when you find out who, you know, it's kind of like you, but you never know necessarily who. You never know and can be like, like, you just never know people's experiences. You don't know what people go through in their life and in their childhood. And clearly this sounds like something that, that Caitlin never even talked about before. And I, my just heart goes out to her because like I said, I've been in a relatable, you know, situation. Um... And unfortunately, it's, uh, as Ayano, I think what she would say, pathological. You know, basically, it's a, been a chain, you know, effect in our family line. And it's something that I was adamant on making sure it gets broken with my kids. And it's not something that we're going to hide. And it's not something that, you know, we're going to not believe our kids over it. And just like, y'all know, like the whole background into that type of stuff or whatever. And it, it's not really much that I can say to it, but it just really just broke my heart to hear that 
that's something that she had to go through. And as well now, it makes sense in regards to a lot of her trauma and a lot of her mental illness. And not to say that, oh, because of that necessarily, that specific thing, you know, that caused her mental illness. But it's definitely caused, is a big impact in her life for who she is today and how she moves going forward and why she may react to things in a certain way, i.e. being such in a panic about, you know, what was going on her body and not knowing and not being able to control it. And just like, I feel like it's definitely more to come of it. Maybe not. Um, maybe when a reunion comes, it might be something that they talk about, you know, more. It's it's sad, y'all, and it's rough. And if anything, in my opinion, speaking up is definitely the part of, is, is the beginning of the healing process. Speaking up about it, speaking it, and I won't necessarily say holding your accuser accountable. If that's something that you're comfortable and that you're even able to do, okay, cool. But it needs to be released from you. That's not something that you can continue to hold on and fester, you know, on the inside with. So to anybody that I'm saying that to anybody that may have gone through that situation, if you know somebody that might have just went through that situation, just... I don't even know how to move on from it and move on from another space. But y'all, not nasty uh, Andrew living like that in Amber House with her baby, with their baby. Y'all, first off, the lawn care was clearly had not been cared for in like clearly a while. So the moment I seen the lawn care, how the lawn looked like, it almost did not look like her house. <clears throat> like if we had not been following her for all these years and, you know, her, she had been living in the house for a very, like, it's, it's, it's like, okay, you, we're not, we know people live like that. People live like that, even with kids. But I think what it is, is just like you're fighting for full custody to take this baby away. You don't seem to be in any fit to be responsible for a child. And you got pissy blankets all around. Just like, and, it's, and I'm like, me being me, I'm like, okay, maybe he didn't know how to handle it. Maybe da da da. So you decide to take him from his mother? Y'all, it, I, that child's house is tore the up. And it's almost like, like the fact that Leah was like, I would have called CPS. That girl has so much sense, and I love how she's really showing up, supporting Amber, because, you know, they've really been through a lot. So having her there, I know that really is, you know, helping Amber to get through, because I couldn't imagine, like, you already being on the outs with one child, and then one child is being taken away from you. I don't think that Amber would have been able to handle that. But nonetheless, she's really been taking... You can really just see her growth and how she's probably practicing a lot of the things that she's been taught, you know, in therapy and just like stuff like that. Because we're definitely seeing a new Amber and how she's handling these circumstances because this is, for me, this is definitely old Amber worthy. Like, it couldn't have been me. I would be, something have to be done. I'd be recording all of that, taking pictures, going back to my lawyer, like, I need an appeal. I need a case to be reopened. I need to try to, like, I don't even know if, like, that's even, I, I don't even know what she could do, y'all, but all I know is, no ma'am, no ham, no turkey. Sir, you're nasty. You're rude. You're disrespectful. Like you, 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 you got the nerve. Like you got the best living for this child, and that's how you live, sir. 
you are out of your freaking mind. And I hope you don't got social media, Andrew, because I know people are digging in your at this point. Like, I wonder if this, like, is going to be in, like, any blogs. But if I, got, I feel like I haven't seen Grace Report's uh, vlogs, um, her, not her vlogs, but, like, Grace Report on YouTube. She does um, a lot of, like, uh, she does, like, reality TV. Um, what, what, do you, what do you, like, even call it? Like, blogs. Like, she's, like, a blogger, but obviously, like, yeah, she's, like, a blogger, basically. And... I cannot wait to, like, just hear what she has to say. Like, look at me, y'all, as I'm sitting here talking to y'all. Like, going and investigating and seeing if she's, like, has been talking about this yet or just, like, not anything just yet, not anything just yet. But, just pot, oh, just shocking podcast. Okay, y'all, I'm focused. Like, how, how, how am I getting, how am I getting, yeah, I know she's been talking about Zach, that Zach and, um, Zach being going to jail, but I know that probably like, you know, clearly came out like time before. And that's why I just talked about that. We're just now about to see them live through it, you know, real time. Um, <coughs> y'all absolutely crazy. Absolutely craziness. I, I was just appalled when they walked into that apartment, that house and saw how that house looked like, did you even pack up anything? It almost had me thinking maybe he did this on purpose. Maybe he tore her house up on purpose. But not to that degree. To to what we no, that is over time. Clearly years of you just being a nasty, filthy ass MF. That's what that is. I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry. That with a baby. With my son? No. No. So outside of that. Because y'all, as you can see, that was like the highlights of this episode, you know, for me. Um, you know, Corey and Cheyenne, their um, co-parental relationship, you know, basically they're trying to like get through this thing. And I'm like, Corey, not you already like about to, but just about to start getting writer on like a full-time now basis and she already missed school and she already about to miss school like sir and then you don't even tell Cheyenne once you realize it you because you, you forgot you she got to hear from writer right and then um Brianna officially moved out I'm definitely I'm really just excited to see her on that journey that's really all I, I have for that I'm excited to see her on that journey you know live her on her own I'm with Brittany I just want her to you know stick to that because it can be very hard when you know you have someone and right her guy is older so it can get a little sticky once you know you're being with somebody and all of a sudden they just start to visit and then it's just like somehow it turns into so i just really am hoping that she you know just sticks with the decision and you know really tries to work towards having that time out you know with the girls and you know that being that i think what i'm also just like a little bit um confused over is where's devon is it not just about him anymore? Like, we clearly seen the whole Lewis situation. Um, but where's Devon at? Is Devon back? But maybe not, because at the same time, we haven't necessarily heard her necessarily even complain about Devon. It was merely just really just, you know, like a Lewis thing. Um I'm just curious, like, where's Devon at? But maybe if she's not fussing and cussing and talking about Devon, maybe that's a good thing, right, y'all? Like, maybe that's a, it's cool that they, like, I guess that's a good thing. Maybe we're going to go with that and, and off with it. Oh, I know what I want to talk about, y'all. Um, Why did I can never, they call her Sissy, so we're going to call her Sissy, because I can never remember that child's name. So Jade and Sean's daughter started pre-K, and Jade had super anxiety and whatever, whatever, whatever. And I'm just, I, I try not to judge people that are like that who really just like have big emotions about their kids, you know, growing up or taking next level. Like, I think 
clearly I have feelings about it, you know, as a mom. But for me, I don't know if it's the fact of me really like basically um helping my sister like basically growing up with my sister as she raised my niece so I was like you know we my sister was young you know she was 17 when she had uh, my niece so like we you know it, clearly I'm two years younger than her it was just a lot of time spent so I was able like to see that grow up and for me it's like no you don't want them to grow up but I think for me it's just always my excitement to miss me I have more just excitement and curiosity into their next milestone you know all right what is this gonna look like for them oh boom now they're walking like how are they gonna walk boom they're starting you know daycare like I thought I was gonna be more emotional about journey starting daycare than I actually ended up being um she's the only child that spent as much time with me so I think really my feelings about putting her in daycare was different than my other kids um but for me I knew it was something that needed to be done um you know for me and my family as far as how you know how, how I've seen things and being um where we are right now um and then that's why I felt you know she just needed structure being that I, I like besides watch a cocoa melon all day like outside of the fact of just like not wanting her to sit in a car with me as I do deliveries or whatever all day I, I was more like like I want her to be with like other kids I want her to start having more of like a structure where she's learning things um and yeah, Coco Melon ain't, ain't with so much learning, okay? So, um, I, so I did have anxiety, more anxiety than the other kids. But at the same time, I was excited to see how she was going to do in daycare. And so I think that's where, I, that's where I'm always at with, you know, my kids. My daughter started middle school. It was just like, wow, I have a middle school. I really have a middle schooler. But it was like, wow, now we're in a... I want to see, like, what kind of person, like, she's now going to be. Like, okay, this was, you know, as you get older, that's that level of maturity just continues to go up and go up and go up. And I think that's just where I am with it. While, yes, I have feelings, my I'm, I'm not that boo-hoo-we-cry person, like, that's crying when my kids have, like, their milestones and whatever. It's just like, wow, like... My kids are really going up, time going by fast, but I'm excited to see the next chapter, the next chapter, you know, for them. But I'm glad that they were able to, you know, they really seem to be able to work through things better. You know, I seem like really her anxiety ran into, coincided, or I would say coincided, but basically her anxiety and then having a little spat about how Sean drives or whatever or whatnot. It was just trivial, but I love that they were able to, because I was a little nervous. Don't get me wrong. I was nervous, y'all. Like, oh, is this, this argument going, and like old arguments, uh, you know, but it didn't. Um, They were still able to come back, have a talk about it, clear things up, you know, apologize, let that be that. So this was a good, this was a good episode. This was a good episode for me, y'all. Um, I'm definitely curious, you know, for next week. I'm curious to hear more about Caitlin. I'll be honest. Um, in the very well we may that may not be some a door that's open just yet. Uh so We'll just see. We'll see. I feel like we very well could be coming close to an end, maybe. Like, I guess we're going to see, like, how far they're going to, like, push out these episodes. So, like I said, y'all definitely let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts on, you know, what this, this episode. Um, if you're a mom, what kind of mom are you? <laughs> you know, I guess with your kids and, you know, is it like, woo, hooray, get those kids out of here. I'm ready for them to have to go to school or I boo to cry tears and I didn't want them to go myself and I, they left me. They weren't thinking about me, which is most kids. Most kids are more, more, even though they may have anxiety, of course, about these next steps and chapters and no longer being around their parents as much I think they get they end up being doing better than what us parents do so yeah y'all I promise I'm getting out of here this time um I love y'all as always be good stay safe stay healthy peace